Homework 9.25, which says a manufacturer uh, claims that the, well, the machine is set at 8.17 uh, ounces. And the question is, is that really true? Or that the null hypothesis would give the benefit of the doubt to the status quo? Versus the alternative possibility that the average is not 8.17. I don't care if it's higher, I don't care if it's lower. I just want to know if the machine doing what it's supposed to be doing at 8.17. Remember, we like eight ounces of eight ounces of candy in the bag, but in order to make sure that most of the bags have a great majority have more than eight, we, we set the machine eight. So the eight, the number eight in the example is really a red herring. It's not really relevant. It's just telling you that the, the bag is advertised. So we have the average, we have the standard deviation. We basically, the four steps we're going to do to answer part A is write down the hypotheses, you plug the number into the formula, and there's only one formula in the whole chapter. This is the only formula, and at this point you should know why we're using this formula. And then we're going to move on to step number three, make a diagram. In this case, there's only one diagram that we can possibly make, the T-diagram, which is label zero. And the rejection region is going to be in the right side, if it's too high or too positive. If it's Two negative is going to be also rejected as zero. And if it's somewhere moderate, in other words, if the x bar and the mu are close to each other, when you subtract the difference close to zero, then we're going to say, okay, I believe the a zero. Do not reject a zero. And the alpha that's going to be given to you at some point will be chopped in half because half goes here and half goes here. Let's put that down. Alpha over two and alpha over two. And all that remains, and then of course at the end when we get the actual numbers, we're going to take that number and locate it with reference to the diagram to decide to accept or reject. So it's a little frustrating for me. I mean, it's pretty simple, but uh, it's frustrating that so many people don't seem to get this. Okay, the average in this case we're told is 8.159. The mu is that ideal value coming from the mu that we decided over here. The s we're told is 0 0.051. Sample size is 50, I believe. So 7 to 0.05 goes about 0.016. Really good answer. Say again? The final answer you wanted? I like the number here. Uh, I, I got negative 1.525. Well, since this is lower than that, it's certainly negative. Negative? 1.525. Negative 1.525. And again, if anybody verify, anybody first of all get a different answer? Anybody verify that it's negative 1.525? Good. Okay, we've got two people doing the calculations. Again, besides criticizing you for not having a book and doing the homework, you've got to bring a calculator to class. If you guys don't, well, okay, I won't make a speech because we're on tape. I don't want this to be, uh, I, don't, I don't want any proof. Okay. So, step number three. To fill out this diagram that we, we just we had the outline because the outline applies to every example. Well, I left that one on the thing. We need degrees of freedom, which is n minus one, which is 49 in this case, and the alpha is 0.05. It's pretty traditional, which is 0, 0.25 goes here, 0, 0.25 goes here. I should really fill that in. So 0, 0.25 is the chance of, of, of a type one error if you make if just by luck the average is much bigger than it should be. And the other 0, 0.25 goes here, but we don't have to go to the t-table. If you go to the back of this, it's another thing. Make sure you bring the t-tables to class. The 0, 0.25 column going down to row number 49 should be a little bit bigger than 1.96. Because remember, you're supposed to memorize the z-table, where it was a perfect knowledge of the sigma. The, the cutoff point was 1.96. Since our sample size is pretty moderate, it's not a small sample size, the t should be, for the same alpha, should be just a little bit bigger, maybe 2.0, something like that. So it's probably 2.0. What is it exactly? 2.0096. 2.0096. Again, anybody is welcome to check it out to make sure you find the same exact number. And now we have step number three completed entirely. And step number four is to take this number, minus 1.5, and to locate it. And of course, minus 1.5 is in between 0 and minus 2.0. We've got to know your negative decimal, of course. Which means we're in the accept region, or essentially, more formally, do not reject a zero as the answer to the question. And the answer to the book's question, is there evidence the population is different from, from 8.17? I hope everybody realizes the answer is no. We don't have any evidence. If it would have been a really, really small number here, we would have ended up in the reject region, and we would have said reject a zero, then yes, we have evidence the machine is not doing what it's supposed to be doing. But it wasn't the case. The machine was exactly what it's supposed to be doing. 
So there is no evidence. It's a double negative, but that's the answer. Any questions before I ask Brian to close off the machine? Any questions?